what is the truth about climate change? Is it really, really the carbon dioxide? And if so, how? That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Using Wi-Fi without NordVPN could mean sharing your private stuff with more people than you think. NordVPN. Online security starts with a click. Ready to hop in the 6 4 and cruise around the blocks. There's a storm coming to the underworld and the heat is on. Take over the blocks and call the shots. It's time to hustle or get hustled. What's it gonna be? Stay sharp. It's a dog eat dog world out there. Don't let them catch you slipping. Only real gangsters thrive in the dope wars world. Hey, David, thank you so much for making yourself available. Great to see you, Rich, again. Yes, 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 because we have done a couple of videos before in the past. And I met you in person when you were living in London. You're no longer living in London. And that was to do with cryptocurrency. But in this video, we're going to be talking about climate change because well, I think that's going, that conversation is going to get more and more louder and louder and louder and louder. Now, this first part of the video is on YouTube. So there's constraints on what we can say on YouTube because I am being shadow banned. The bulk of this conversation is going to be an odyssey. And you can see the, the bit.ly link up there, bit.ly slash crypto rich odyssey. So please go and follow me there. I post videos on odyssey that you don't even see on YouTube. And that's because of YouTube censorship. Also subscribe, follow me on Twitter, crypto rich YT, and join my official Telegram announcement channel. And I'm also going to have the links to the work that you do, David, as well. Yeah. Do you just want to start by just saying a little bit about yourself and what you do and why you're here? Sure, I'm a, I'm a lifelong entrepreneur, I'm sort of Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur. I've uh, started, I don't know, a dozen companies or so. Um, and I'm, I'm really interested in innovation. And I spend most of my free time when I'm not with my kids trying to uncover the truth about the world. And I, I write a weekly blog about what I would call the big failings of humanity, the big problems we should work on because the small stuff doesn't matter. And I think most people spend most of their time on the small stuff. No, I think that's too bad. Right. Very good. Very good. And you've got a YouTube channel and I'll link to that where you talk about a lot about climate and all the factors that affect climate. But I want to start yeah. off with uh, greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide. Sure. Because can you just summarize what the mainstream discourse is? Yeah, sure. It's easy. The mainstream discourse is that we started measuring temperatures just 200 years ago, which is this fast in a geologic sense. And since then, temperatures have been rising. So, well, what could it be? Oh, oh, it might be carbon dioxide, which is also going up. So it's really correlation. And that's the main argument. Right. And, uh, and then around that, they've built a whole bunch of scaffolding to show causation. Uh -huh. uh, and what's some of the scaffolding that they've built to show causation? Oh, it's elaborate. That's what the IPCC does. That's their job. The IPCC's original <laughs> charter was to justify and support the, the AGW thesis, the, the you know, anthropogenic uh, global warming thesis, and not to challenge it or to look at the science or to try to understand climate. It was really designed, the IPCC is really designed to support the, the argument or, of causation around the phenomenon of correlation. Right, right. Okay, so it's not a, they're not looking at it freshly, they're not examining it and questioning it. It's a political it. organization. Everybody's appointed politically. Uh, and there's, and it's under the guise of science, but it's really politics. And who, how did it get set up and who set it up? This happened a long time ago. This actually happened, I think, in, in 1988, at the very, very beginning. And it was much more benign back then. It was more hey, let's look into this science. Let's try to figure this out. We, we believe there's, that humans are causing climate change, uh, but the first report and the second report were pretty neutral um, through the, about the mid-90s. And then toward the end of the 90s, it really started to get going. And, and there was just a huge acceleration in, in uh, uh, putting out material that supports the HGW thesis. Uh, and... And at the same time, starting to talk about decarbonization. So it was really the third report really had a big change. And that was, I, I don't know if I have the dates right, but around 2000 sometime. 
uh, maybe 2002 or so. And that, that really started the shift toward commitment, co country scale commitment to decarbonization. Okay. And then and based on, just based on correlation and, and a lot of hand waving. Sure. And, and the basic argument is that increasing carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide and methane will increase global temperatures and that'll cause all sorts of changes and it's not good for us, right? That's the basic argument. And then the remedies, I mean, at individual level, what they're talking about is managing our carbon dioxide footprint, that we need to reduce it, take it out of the atmosphere. I mean, that technology isn't available yet, but those, those are the whole ideas, right? That we have to reduce our carbon dioxide footprint and the amount that we emit. That's coming from the proponents of that argument. It's a package deal, Rich. It's a package. The package is we get rid of fossil fuels. We don't do nuclear because that's bad for some random reason that no one can make a good argument for. And we do scale up uh, wind which we've seen is ridiculously unreliable, and solar, which we know is unreliable because it doesn't work you know, two thirds of the time. And we magically produce a lot of batteries that, that somehow can power, like if you're running a hospital, uh, you know, you have all the power you need to run your hospital or the grid or transport or anything else has to all be electrified. And this, and this whole package deal got sold in about 2000, took maybe 10 years, more or less, but now it's a, now it's a full package. And now it's, uh, as you can tell by the price of energy in Europe, finally, you know, we've been saying, I've been saying this for years and years, this is not going to go over well, especially with poor people. It's not. Uh, this it's is not, not gonna end well because we don't magically have batteries and we don't magically have all these fantastic substitutes for what is a tremendously life giving and, and a uh, quality of life making system of burning fossil fuels to improve to 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 improve humanity. Okay. Well, look, I, there there is something I want to say about the batteries um, and what it takes to get them, and the energy okay. that we need in the first place to be able to get those batteries and to get those raw materials. Uh, and then also, we're going to talk about how maybe maybe the global climate, the whole planetary system isn't just a simple correlation between greenhouse gases and temperature, that there may be other factors at play as well, you know, like currents and the shape, the, was it the shape of the continents where they are, and, and perhaps the sun, maybe the sun's got a part to play. But that conversation that this may be a more complex system is not going to be on YouTube. I'm going to have a link to the video in the description below, but otherwise you go to Crypto Rich Odyssey and you'll find it there. And then we shall continue that conversation there. Yeah, because there may be some other things going on. There may be. There mm -hmm. might be. We should look at those possibilities, don't you think? I do. I do.